AMD's Ryzen APUs looked like being the saviors of low-spec gaming. Their integrated Vega GPUs were weaker than all but the weakest of modern GPUs, but from late 2020 to mid-2022, those GPUs practically didn't exist. Of course, now we're past that, for the most part, and you're free to fill that vacant slot on your motherboard with a huge throbbing beast of a GPU. But can the Ryzen 5 3400G, the one you bought for its integrated graphics rather than its CPU horsepower, actually keep up? The Ryzen 3000 series is generally well regarded overall. Built on the desktop CPU industry's first 7 nanometer process, it marked a huge IPC jump from Zen and Zen Plus, with better RAM compatibility and overclocking potential, and the future looks pretty rosy too thanks to the presence of its Zen 2 architecture in the ninth console generation. The 3400G, however, only slides into the 3000 series on a technicality. The architecture of its 4 cores and 8 threads is 12 nanometer Zen Plus, the refresh of Zen that originally powered the Ryzen 2000 series. While the first two series of Zen processors were known for revitalizing the high core count CPU market, they weren't exactly praised for their high single thread performance. If you were enticed into buying a Ryzen 3400G based on the glowing reviews of the Ryzen 3 3100 and 3300X, you might have made an error. My CPU reviews to date have mostly featured Intel's Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge architectures, some of the most well-regarded, long-lived CPU series PC enthusiasts have ever seen, but which have dated somewhat in recent years. In this video I'll be including comparisons to those decade-old CPUs as well as the Ryzen 5 5600X, which is the newest, highest-end CPU I've tested yet, and also the one from my personal rig. The test system is the MPGPC with an MSI B450 Tomahawk Max motherboard, a pair of single rank 8GB sticks of DDR4-4000, clocked down to 3200CL16, and an RTX 3070. The CPU itself is clocked to 4.1GHz, which was the highest stable OC I could manage, and from what I've seen online seems to be about par for the course. Lately, Valorant doesn't want to run with my benchmarking tool of choice, MSI Afterburner, open, even if I make an exception in Revertuner, so I had to resort to good old fraps. This doesn't give quite the same breakdown as Afterburner, so I had to do some googling and some mathematics, but I finally arrived at an average of 214 FPS. This puts it about 7% or so above an overclocked Sandy Bridge quad-core, and so it won't impress anyone upgrading from an i5-2500K. Still, it's exceptionally playable, and in fact it led to my first deathmatch win in weeks. Well, okay, I'll take the credit, but playing on a decent CPU helped. I want to say Battlefield 5 was an improved experience from what I've seen with Intel's old chips, and there's no doubt that it was an improvement, but it still wasn't as good as I'd hoped. As with all of my previous Battlefield 5 benchmarks, I ran the test in DX12, though DX11 may be the better option for real gameplay. Averages are up to 116, significantly higher than any of the older CPUs, including the 6-core extremes. Fortnite Chapter 4 dropped on the day I tested the 3400G, so it's perhaps not the fairest comparison ever. In performance mode, FPS almost hit 175 on average. The standard Fortnite stutter hasn't gone anywhere, however, so 1% lows are still too low, and 0.1s aren't old enough to drink. Compared to Sandy Bridge, it's still not that impressive, only drawing level with the 4.3GHz i7-3820 and 3.8GHz i7-2600, though, again, this is not a completely apples-to-apples -apples comparison, as those CPUs were tested in Chapter 3. I'd normally say that Overwatch 2 is fairly GPU-bound at 1440, and I usually find running with 66% scaling gives at least a 10% boost to performance. That's not the case here, as the Ryzen 3400G is clearly holding things back. At both full 1440 and 66% of that, the game sticks to around 160 FPS.
As an open world console port, you'd think Spider-Man Remastered would see a benefit from modern architectures, but it seems the 3400G isn't quite modern enough. Without RT, averages break 70 FPS, only slightly above an i7-2600 and about half of what a Zen 3 CPU can do. With RT, things aren't improved either, as the 3400G only manages just under 42 FPS, about even with an overclocked i7-3820. Cyberpunk 2077 is also disappointing on the 3400G, with both the RT on and RT off benchmarks only able to match the 2011 i7-2600 you'd have found in a retired office PC. Averages without RT come to about 45 FPS. Enabling RT and dropping DLSS to balanced sees them fall to 34 FPS, neither of which is unplayable, but considering how big of a jump there is between this and the Zen 3 CPU, this is another nail in the 3400G's coffin. The trend continues in Red Dead Redemption 2, with the 3400G falling between the bizarrely low i7-3820 and bizarrely high 2600. The average is a pretty playable 59 FPS, but 1% lows are less than ideal at just 38 FPS. Elden Ring drops away below its 60 FPS cap on the 3400G, barely reaching above the mid 50s and averaging only 53. It's actually not a bad experience overall, much like RDR2, you're probably not going to have a problem with these frame rates, especially if you're not comparing against other CPUs at the time. But that's what I'm doing right now, and right now, this doesn't look great. Finally, wrapping up with a decent win for the 3400G. It's the fastest quad-core I've tested in Civ 6 thus far, achieving an average turn time of 7.45 seconds. In my opinion, the 3400G falls short of the mark in modern games. Unlike more recent APUs like the 5600G and 5700G, or the OEM exclusive 4000 series chips that can now be picked up on AliExpress, this CPU doesn't really have the per-thread performance to match modern GPUs. The first generation of Ryzen CPUs were impressive for their quantity of threads, not necessarily the quality of them. In 2017, AMD matching Intel's IPC from six years earlier was unironically impressive, especially when they were doing it across eight cores for a reasonable price. Across four cores, it's far less impressive, and dropping it in the middle of the far more competent 3000 series was frankly misleading. If you want your Ryzen 5 3400G to graduate from IGP University, I don't think you should raise your expectations too high. A GTX 1660 or equivalent would be the upper bounds of what I think this APU could reasonably handle, and pairing it with even a low-end RT-capable GPU like an RTX 3050 or 2060 is not likely to give the best ray tracing experience. Of course, the perhaps more exciting component of the Ryzen 5 3400G APU is its integrated graphics processor, the Vega 11. I tested that chip earlier in the year, check that video out on screen now. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>